Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining into the Giving Devotional. My name is Pastor Armando, and I just wanna say, wow, what a blessing these devotionals have been. Each morning, I'm eagerly waiting to hear each devotional and share them with my wife. And I wanna say thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we're gonna be talking about getting in position for provision. That that word position, the definition for that is a practical way in which someone or something is arranged or placed. You see, God wants to place and arrange you for provision for 2021. And you are asking God, Lord, what do I do to get in position? That's one of the questions we can be asking. Lord, what do I do to get into position? And I want to give you two keys you can get into position. Number one is listen to the instructions God is giving us. Our senior pastor has heard a word from God for us to start this year off with a 21-day fast, right? To set goals, to get ready with a first fruit offering and turn it in at the end of the month of January with a word attached to it. We listen to the instructions God has given us, right? The second thing we can do is we take action on the instruction God has given us. If you haven't started the 21-day fast, join us these last couple of days and with the fast. If you haven't sat down and written down your goals, seek God for your goals. And let's start believing God and asking what we should bring at the end of the month in January as a first fruit offering with our word attached to it. We're believing that as we give our best to God in the first part of the year, the rest of our year will be blessed. So I want to share a portion of scripture with you that shows when we receive instructions and we follow the instruction from God, he puts us in a position for provision. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 2, it reads, Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go east and hide by Kerif Brook near where it enters the Jordan Brook. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you, for I have commanded them to bring you food. You see, although there was lack everywhere else and famine throughout the land, God was giving him instructions to get in position for provision. When the brook dried up, God gave Elijah new instructions. And we're going to pick that up in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8. Verse 8. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go and live in the village of Zarephath, near the city of Sidad. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. Not only is God giving you instructions for provision, but he's also instructing others to get in position to release provision for you. In verse 10, it says, So he went to Zarephath, and as he arrived at the gate of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks, and he asked her, Would you please bring me a little water in a cup? Elijah did not demand her to bring him a cup of water, but he asked her to bring her a cup of water. God is asking us to give willingly, and I'm asking you, Are you placed or arranged in in a way to be set up for provision or maybe to release provision for somebody else? In verse 11, it goes on to say, As she was going to get it, he called to her, Bring me a bit of bread too. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't even have a single piece of bread in the house. And I have only a handful of flour in the jar and a little bit of cooking oil in the bottom of a jug. I was gathering a few sticks to cook my last meal, and then my son and I will die. But Elijah said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, right? Go ahead and do just that, what you have said. But make a little bread for me first, then use what you have left over to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, There will always be flour and oil left in your containers until the time the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. So she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour and oil left over in the container, just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. Because Elijah was willing to get in position, Not only for him to his needs to get met, but also for the widow and her entire family. I remember there was a time just a couple years after I got married, uh, me and my wife were ready to buy our first house together. Now, I was born in Riverside. I lived in Riverside all my life and all my family lived in Riverside. So we began to look for houses in Riverside. But then we got a word from God not to buy a house in Riverside, but to buy a house in San Bernardino. Our realtor even took us to Highland, which is pretty close to San Bernardino. And as we showed up to look at that house, we couldn't get in the lockbox. She couldn't open it up. 
She called the selling agent and we couldn't get a hold of the selling agent. So there was no way to look at that house because God was calling us to San Bernardino. As we followed the instructions that God had given us and we moved to San Bernardino, we were blessed with a beautiful house, double of what we would have received for the same price in Riverside, right? We had a house sitting on almost two acres with a pool and now an opportunity to minister to people here in San Bernardino in our home. God had provided something for us that I would never have been able to get on our own because we were willing to get into position. That house would not have been released anywhere else but here in San Bernardino. We went back and forth. I mean, there's a whole testimony of how we went back and forth with the price and my wife just losing her job of 10 years at the hospital right before we're about to close the loan. That alone would have stopped the whole loan process. But God provided the provision for us to make sure to be here in San Bernardino. So I want to share some practical applications from the book of Malachi with you. God has given us some instructions in this portion of scripture on how to get in position with our finances. This is a portion of scripture that you may have heard before, and it talks about tithes and offering. It shows us that we can put ourselves out of position when we don't give our tithes and offering because we're cheating God. So I want to encourage every single person listening today to this devotional, don't be afraid. The widow became afraid because she thought the provision had to come through her, but it was actually coming through God. So don't be afraid, right? Let's position ourselves and begin to place ourselves for a moment where God can bless us. So in Malachi 3.10, it says, bring all the tithes and offering into the storehouse so there'll be enough food in my temple. Bringing is getting yourself into position. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open up the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Right here we see not only will God's house be in a position for provision to meet the needs of the community, but also your house will now be in a position for provision. So we honor God with our finances. This is how God ends this portion of scripture. Try it. Put me to the test. And now I'm asking you, try it today. You heard a word. Can you apply the word? Position yourself for provision by taking action on the instructions that God has given us. I want to thank each and every person who's gotten in position here at The Way World Outreach. God bless you. We love you and have a wonderful day.